Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome once again in reflection towards Christmas. Sixth day we are in and today we are reflecting once again on how God works through unusual ways and how he has promised things earlier and how he is fulfilling the promises. Earlier we had seen Mika chapter 5 to Isaiah chapter 7, 14 and today we are seeing Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 to 7 which speaks about the Prince of Peace. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder, and he will be wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 2 verses 11 affirm Jesus as the fulfilment of this prophecy, bringing peace and establishing an everlasting kingdom. Jesus is the promised Messiah, the Prince of Peace. Jesus came, he was born 2000 years ago, he died for us on the cross and he is here with us today. This is what we know, this is our faith. But one question that I have in mind is, if the Prince of Peace is our King, then why the world is still in pieces? We know about the political atmosphere of the world right now. Russia, Ukraine, or Palestine, Israel, or any other country. Why is so much of pain, suffering, and restlessness in the world today when we have a king of peace, prince of peace, who rules us? Jesus is the promised Prince of Peace. He bought peace for us. Every time after Mass, the promise given to us is go forth in the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ is given to us, supplied to us. Then why is even our life not in peace? Go home and there is disturbance. Every time some or the other nagging, some or the other confusion at home. There's, there's everything but no peace. I am preparing, you are preparing yourself for Christmas, the birth of the Prince of Peace. Then why there is no peace? These are questions and there is no ready-made answer to this question. Therefore, I cannot claim to be answering that question. Because we do not have answer to this question. And in a way, all of us have answer to this question. But we cannot answer it. Because we know there are so many things within us, around us, that are blocking this peace. You cannot have water and fire in the same place. You cannot have death and life in the same place. The scripture says, I have placed death and life in front of you. Stretch forth your hand and choose life. Choose life, the Lord says. If my choice itself is for confusion, if my choice itself is for the things of the world, then how can I claim the peace of Christ? Today, the Lord wants you to claim this peace. Claim this peace. The Lord has promised this peace. We have to claim this peace. Because the Prince of Peace who was promised, the promise is fulfilled. It was promised. It is fulfilled. If that promise has to be fulfilled in my life, then I have to eradicate all those things that are not bringing peace. If there is war happening in a place, there is a reason for which the war is happening. The reason is basically the focus of people there is much beyond the well-being of its, the focus of government is much more than the well-being of the people. They have their own agendas, they have their own fights, they have their own reasons, which is much more above the well-being, the welfare. And that's how well-being and welfare is pushed through the back door and there is suffering everywhere. Struggle is good. But for what? 
What is the purpose? What is the goal? What is the aim? Today, Jesus is speaking to this world of pieces to bring it back to peace. And this peace will rule, will happen because he has come for the same. Only when we cooperate with him. Amen.